What's up, y'all? It's your boy OG Kilo. I'm here with my brother, Al Tariq Gums, aka Killer Reek. We in the building. What up, bro? What up, bro? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> we got much to talk about today. You already know. So I got this exclusive interview. All right, this exclusive interview is this is the first time my brother ever spoke on camera to anybody about some real serious and good topics and issues, all right? It's gonna help the youth. So every, I hope all y'all tune in. Y'all gonna learn some lessons. It's gonna be some real good stuff. We gonna get started, all right? All right, so first of all, my brother, where you get the name Killer Reek? Well, first of all, you know, I wanna thank you for allowing me for this platform. Well, you know, my brother, so yes, I decided sir. to do this one first with family. Absolutely. You know, so. The name Killer Reek, man, I think I was probably like 16 and I was down in Jamesburg and I had to do a three and a half year sentence. All right. You know what I mean? So, long story short, an uh, incident happened between Newark and, and um, Atlantic City. Okay. You know what I mean? And the Atlantic City guy didn't want to fight or whatever the case may be, but one of the other Atlantic City guys, my man's. Okay. You know what I mean? So he wanna beat up or get into it with another North dude, cause the other North dude acting crazy. Okay. So I'm like, all right, as long as y'all don't jump me, y'all can't jump me, y'all jump me, we have a problem. Right. So anyway, he like, all right. So he take off, go over there, and they start fighting or whatever. I didn't know he had a knife, he was hitting my man and shit. Okay. But uh, we in juvenile. Right. And so they took off and ran over there too, it was like five of them. So I don't ran jumped in the middle of the bunk and jumped smack down in the middle of the crowd. Dude from North behind me, and it's like about five Atlanta City dudes. I punched the tallest one, he like six, seven. <laughs> Dropped him, like, what are you doing? Right, 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 right. <laughs> and I kind of like went a little crazy after that. So my cousin, he was down there when we got shipped out. You know, they ship us out that night because we tore it up. You know, they see old dude, we walk in there, the other CEOs come running there, he like, What's going on? What What's up? He's like, no, get him right here. Grab him and point at me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yo, yeah, what's yeah. up? Right, like, right. I'm like, oh man. I kind of like blacked out a little bit. But when we got to the other spot, my cousin, he was like, man, man, you was tripping, man. God, man, man, you was killing shit. Yeah. Like, matter of fact, that's your name from now on. Your name, Killer Reed. You know what I'm saying? And I'm staying in the bars real quiet. You know, right. I was real, like, I was real introverted. And I'm just like, all right. He's like, for real, man, that's your name. And I just started repping it ever since then. And then it went from that to, you know, it wasn't even about, like, the name. It was more so making sure that, you know, my whenever I represented something, that's going to stand up right. Right. You feel what I'm saying? That's so right. I had to make sure my name was standing up right. That's how I got the name, though. Yeah. Everybody yeah. thought it was after the cases or whatever. Right. Nah, I had it when I was 15. All right. Yeah. All right, so then you joined the Blood Gang. Mm -hmm. But not only did you join, you told me prior to this, you actually was pushed into a position of leadership. Tell mm -hmm. us about that. Well, you know, when I, when I turned blood, you know, blood at that time in Jersey was pretty much, it was still, it was here, but it was, it was quiet. You know what I mean? It was something that wasn't, you know, like it is now or whatever. But, uh, see, I, 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 I became blood under the pretense of saying we was about our community. Okay. You feel what I'm saying? We was about our people. I didn't need a gang. I didn't really, you know, I was already in the streets before that. So I didn't really need no gang. And I don't like even putting the gang terminology on, even though that's what it is. Right. But I don't like doing it because, you know, some of us really look at it as a family. Cause we ain't got nobody else. Right. You know what I mean? So it's our family. So I try to put the more family code on it. But, like, ever since, you know, I was younger, it was always a leadership type of position for me anyway. Wherever I was at or wherever I was doing, I was always kind of like a little bit of a leader, even though I really didn't spoke, speak a lot. But, when, uh, you know, I started the first riot, the first blood ever riot over there in New Jersey. So when that happened, they kind of threw me to the scratch. I was on the blood for like two days. Right. You know, they thought I was a big homie. They was calling me a big homie all the way until I became a big homie, but I wasn't even a big homie. It right. was like he had to have power there in order to do that. Right. And it wasn't even that, you just had respect. Where was the riot at? The riot was in Bordentown, New Jersey. Okay. Gladiator School. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. And I was full of fire and vinegar. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, I you know, because I was at that time where it was like, you know, them streets, them streets, make you into either somebody's prey or you're gonna be a predator. Right. You feel what I'm saying? Like, that's just how it is. People don't wanna acknowledge it. 
you know, they want to go around it, but that's it's, it's, it's hard out there, you know, trust out there, so you have to stand up, you have to, because if you don't, they're going to smash you, right? you know what I mean? If you can't get out like a lot of us do, then you have to try to figure out how to survive. Right. And in there, like, the, the, the strongest lion wins. Absolutely. You gotta push because if you don't push, they're gonna push on you. And they don't wanna deal with that reality. They want, oh no, you're promoting that. I'm, no, I'm promoting truth. I'm promoting honesty. It's messed up out there. Right. You, know, you see it every day. So, in order for us to acknowledge it, we, we have to recognize what it is. So, I, when I turned blood, it was, it, it was at a time where, you know, it was good to say that you was representing something where everybody was on the same code of conduct. Right. You know, so it was prideful to, to say that, you know what I mean? And nowadays they try to make you feel unproud of even saying something. And I'm like, damn, how can I be unproud of something I was willing to die for? Right. I was willing to lose my life for it. Right. So for me to not represent it the way it's supposed to be represented, I feel ashamed. You understand right. what I'm saying? So right. I stand always on my ten toes. I never ran from it. I never ducked it because I be trying to tell the young brothers and sisters that it's the illegal activities that's causing the problems. Right. Being a blood, crip, G, whatever, that's not the problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? And if we in the law, we're in the land of laws. And I was, the, it's more harsher on us than anyone else, but you know, it is what it is. You either accept it or reject it. It don't right. really matter. But it's just acknowledging for what it is. So when you break the law and the things come down on you, you have to accept it. You know? So what made you join the game in the first place? I don't know, man. That's probably the one thing in my life where, you know, I allow someone else's influence to influence my decision. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Usually I just, you know, be doing my own thing. So when, when my bro came and pulled up on me and asked me do I want to do it, I was just like, because I was cool with him and he was solid. So I'm like, all right, I ain't tripping. Then my right. other brother, he was with it. So we just was riding and rolling. Right. So what you get arrested for? How much time? <laughs> let's, say the one, let's say the one that came with the most time. Oh, oh, oh. Well, <laughs> well, this the the last the, the the one when I got locked up in 01 was for a murder. Okay, you know what I mean. That was the, that was the third one they was trying to accuse me of, and I was just like, you know, I didn't do them. <laughs> right, 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 right. You feel what I'm saying? But they don't want to believe that. Right. You know, they don't believe in coincidences and stuff like that. You've been in the wrong place at the wrong time and all that. That's, right. Like that's just you know for the so-called innocent. But if you're on the streets with any kind of record or any kind of jacket, you did it. You right, know, right. What absolutely. you say? If you have any kind of criminal history, you did it. Like, right, right, you know right, I mean? right. Like I could go to trial and win, and they'd just say, "Oh, the jury failed today." Like, <laughs> so wait, tell me about this. It was a time where they had to move you. From what was the what was the prison in from, Jersey? From Trenton to, to Arizona. That was something. About? Yeah, they was like, what was they what was they afraid of? You was gonna cause a riot in there or something? Nah, they was they was they was you know they said I put a hit out on all the police over there. So uh, one of the guys he ended up getting stabbed up. So when he got stabbed up, he flipped and told them that it was a guy that was in Northern State Prison that had all the police addresses and the shootings and stuff like that that was happening and all was happening because the Bloods was sending you know hits out on the police, which wasn't true. Okay. You feel what I'm saying? It yeah. wasn't true. He was lying. You okay. Know I mean? He was a rat. So, you right. know, it wasn't true. So, but they don't want to listen to that. They never liked me anyway. Because right, I wasn't right. tolerating a lot of their shit that they was doing to us. Right. They was really, really, like, abusing us. So, I'm the type of, uh, you're not just going to do what you want. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> like, Absolutely. Like, okay, I took my plea bargain. I came in here, did my time. And now I got to come in here and get judged by you. Right. You feel what I'm saying? That's not right. Who are you? Right. You know what I mean? You go home and do whatever it is you do. That's your life. You, I didn't make you come get this job. Right. <laughs> to see where this is at now, you know, it, it's, it's heartbreaking. Because that's not what it was supposed to be about. Even back then, in the 70s, it wasn't supposed to be about that. So I try not to talk about a lot of things because every time you, you say something, but I wanted to make sure I was 100% positive before I talk. Right. You feel what I'm saying? I'm not going to get up here and talk, but I know I'm over here doing my dirt right. and I'm bringing attention to everybody else that I'm doing something with because now I'm running my mouth and talking and then I'm still over here acting like I'm still with this. You right. got to either be one or the other. You right. feel what I'm saying? Right. And I ain't never been the type of dude who's going to allow my heat to bring someone else down. You right. feel what I'm saying? I don't want no one in prison. Right. You know what I mean? Right. I don't like, I don't, it's not my thing. I'm not going to help them lock anybody up. 
You feel mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I have no understanding for anyone who has authority and then they take that authority and try to abuse it. Right. You know what I mean? They just be doing all kinds of things and, and it just be bad. So I was gonna let the guys that <laughs> nah, we ain't going for it. Right. <laughs> so tell me about when you started your own set. How that how that come about? Uh that's one of those questions where, you know, uh I wrote a book about my life. I really ain't put that one in there neither because, you know, I'm like, ah, you wasn't there, you wasn't there. Right. But, you know, that question right there, I, I'm going to leave it alone because, you know, that's putting the names and everything and what happened and shit like that. All I can say is that at the end of the day, it was a blessing and what the brother did for me, it was a blessing. So, you know, and all my brothers and sisters who died and who's still here, you know, and that's representing it, we trying to represent it right. And I love y'all. You feel what I'm saying? Right. So, how many years did you do? <laughs> this time I did 21 and a half. 21 years and four months. Wow. Day how do you, day. So how do you stay sane? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I, mean man, I don't know how. I, I, I thought I went insane. You know what I mean? So I don't, you know, because they're in there, they're trying to turn you into things that do not and is not conducive to your growth as a man, right. as a human. Like, that was, the things that they're trying to turn people into in there would have literally drove me insane. You feel what I'm saying? And I was bucking so much because they're trying to tell me their way of thinking is right. right. But your way of thinking oppresses me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, I'm not trying to hear that. You know, they used to be mad at me. But I'm not trying to destroy your jails and all that. I'm not trying to do none of that. I'm just saying you're not going to break me. Right. You feel what I'm saying? You're not going to turn me into that. That's what you're trying to do. And I don't like that. Right. You know what I mean? That's like just keep so, force feeding people. So what is the what is the, the mental thing? Like in a regular day, right? What is the thing you tell yourself to say, you know what? We alright, we good. I, I when I used to get up in the morning, first thing I tried to do, I had just started this little remedy, you know, I grab the Bible. I read five chapters of the Bible before I can get out to bed. Okay. You feel what I'm saying? I had just started this like two, three years ago, but prior to that, I used to just be like, man, change your energy. Especially when you wake up on one of those mornings, like I'm still in here. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. damn. So you like, man, so then you try to you try to change your energy. So I just lay there because I don't want my energy when I come out and I meet one of the men who his family don't probably die or something like that. He may need a shoulder. Right. You feel what I'm saying? He's a good man, so he may need somebody he can talk to. That's another good man. Right. You feel me? So you don't notice until you come out and check on the brother and see what's going on because it'd be a lot of things going on that really, if you don't have a, the right sanity, you will fold to that in there. You, it's, it's, it's overpowering. It's overwhelming. And if you don't have a strong thing for your moral set as a man, they gonna get you. Right, right. <laughs> they gonna get you. I'm telling you, they breaking them in there. I believe it. Well, they breaking them. Like I'm talking about, like either they already was broken or they been broke. For real. So tell me about these books, cause you wrote some books. Yeah. You know, I'm proud of that. You know, I started writing one in, in, in 03. You know, I, the first one I wrote was called How to Keep Your Kids Away From Gangs. Okay. You know, one of my old heads in the joint, like, okay, you saying you're trying to change? Okay, well, write some books about it. When I wrote uh, How to Keep Your Kids Away From Gangs. Okay. And then I'm like, oh, I can write. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So then I wrote The Come Up. This all in the same night. Wow. You know what I mean? Yeah. I end up by about 6 o'clock the next morning when my man came to the door. I wrote four books in wow. less than 24 hours. I was oh, slap shit. crazy, you know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. So my man, he was tripping. So I got I got 17 books. I got eight playwrights, you know what I mean, that we working on. Like two or three of them is geared towards kids for bullying, anti-bullying and stuff like that. Right. You know, uh, we had, I wrote four movie strips. You know what I mean? Right, I, right. I, I love writing the movies because, you know, that's just, that's all, my dream is to see one of them up on a big screen. Right. You know, that's my dream to see that. You know, because that when God allowed me to show me that I had a talent and show me that it's more to my life than just that, right. I said, okay, okay. Now I'm using it to try to show the young ones, man, look, man, you still can come from that and still be solid. Right. You still do what you need to do. Ain't nothing wrong with change. That's right. That's <laughs> Who a fact. told y'all something wrong with change and wanting to do better and wanting to be better? Who told y'all that make you soft and a sellout? Right. Because you want better. Right. Absolutely. That makes no sense to me. And the people that is doing that, they don't care about you. They don't. 
Because a person who cares about even if they can't fix their self and get their self together, they want to see you do good. Because right. they know your energy, you may just pull them and grab them and pull them and help them. Right. You know what I mean? But if right. I'm steady pulling on you and you can't go nowhere. And that's that ghetto mentality, that's that hood mentality where, you know, they talking about with the hood love you. know, it can never love you because we dying. Right. You know what I mean? We dying out there and it was crazy. And that's why when I was coming up, I was a little bit ahead of the curve on a lot of things. I just... I don't know, I was. I understand these young ones now because I was them before they were saying that this was wild. I was doing that wild nonsense, so I understand right. where they anger coming from. Right. And us, our generation, you know, we really didn't pass anything down because we was thugging and we was acting up and we was going to jail, so we weren't even able to pass the Jews down to the young ones. So now the young ones, when they doing anything that's in 35s and stuff like that, they don't know nothing because they didn't get taught nothing, so they can't pass it to the ones who 24. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So now you just have all this madness going on because the lessons is being stopped. Don't nobody want to hear it. If it ain't about TikTok, if it ain't about twerking, and if it ain't about that, don't nobody want to hear it. Right, you know? right. It's bad. Because right. you know your history, you it'll make you walk different. So what's your message for somebody that's thinking about joining the game today? Mm. You know, my question to them would be like, why? You know, you gotta once you once you decide to do it, then you know that's your decision. You know, but you know the question is always going to be about why. Why are you deciding to join when at the end of the day things have changed? I used to tell all my homies, uh, anybody that came to this, I never forced nobody into this. You know what I mean? Even when I wrote my book, I was explaining to them like I am still active, I am still with it. So, but I don't like the fact that I'm gonna sit here and make it seem like. It's okay to bring a 12-year-old and a 10-year-old into this knowing what's going to happen. Right. And nine times out of ten, he's going to be in jail, he's going to get killed. Right. It's, it ain't no middle ground in it. It ain't no, uh, maybe you, nah. Right. Nine times out of ten, more than likely, once they get into it, you know, things will get. So you want to explain that to them. And if they make the decision to still want to rock, now they can't blame nobody. Right. You feel what I'm saying? You, you got to accept your choices. Everything is choices as men. So when you have an older man like me, when they respect me, why would I take a young brother who's 10, 11, and he just really want that love to influence him to join this, knowing that I can't protect him like I would have if I was still on my nonsense. Right. So why would I even accept it? That, that'd that be crud ballish of me. Right. But we all got kids, even the hardcore gangsters. We all got kids. Right. You know, don't nobody want to see a kid get killed and shot all up 30 times. 100 round drum. Right. Like, nah, man. But the older ones who decide to join, man, I just, you know, <laughs> like, you know, may, the, may, may you be safe, man. I, I don't, I don't, I'm not going to say, I don't promote gang activity. What I try to promote is more of a family orientated type of thing. Even though it's so much, you know, madness infested in it, I try to make sure that my energy would have, whatever I run into, young, old, whatever. No matter what set, blood, trip, vice lords, GDs, everybody that ever met me always met me and knew that he, they was dealing with a man that was always going to stand on his word. You feel right. what I'm saying? Right. So I always have respect from all of them, you know, because I want to see him do good. You can still represent you what you represent. You just don't have to be out there committing crimes. Right, <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Who told you that you can't be that? I got to go do something wrong in order for me to represent this? That makes no sense. Right. You know what I mean? We need more leaders. We need more people working. You know what I mean? Whatever we can do to start fixing our communities. That's what we need. Absolutely. So what would you do differently if you can go back 30 years? <laughs> I, will, I, will, I will try to take control of my anger. Mm -hmm. I will try to not allow my anger to dictate my actions. Because I allow my conditions to, you know, infest in me. You know, the, my conditioning of seeing my mothers, and my aunts, all the women out of my life on drugs, didn't really have a father figure, you know, and the, every, didn't have a birthday, you feel what I'm saying? Like, it was love in the house, but everything else was chaotic, right. you know what I mean? So, I, w I, would try to, I would try to tell myself that, you know, it's going to be all right, you know what I mean? Right. Ain't no need for you getting all angry. I got, I got so angry, I lost it, you know, because I felt like... I didn't do anything to deserve this situation. So this situation was for them. I was a good kid. I wasn't one of those who were disrespectful to his parents. You know, all the adults got the respect and all that. That's why they couldn't understand what happened. How you go from this quiet? Because I always chased education. 
I stayed mm. in school. Even when they were trying to, like, we had snowstorms, I'd be the only one in the school. Even when I'm in jail, I'm, the, I'm in class, it's like two of us in the whole school. Mm. You know what I mean? Right, right. Like, I've never not wanted to learn, but like I said, I allow my conditioning to dictate my actions, man. And that, that, that's one thing a person should do. You young ones out there, man, if y'all see that things are wrong, you angry and all that, find something else to do, man. Don't let that anger make you go do some nonsense that you're gonna regret. Cause I'm telling you, you're gonna regret it. So tell me about this new name that you go by, which is Sankofa. <laughs> Sankofa is, you know, an African word, and it's a big following in Africa, but the way I got the name was from my OG, uh, Third Eye. He's down in, um, Broadway, I think, right now. And back in like 02, 03, I was already starting my transition of understanding who I was. And I'm like, okay, if I'm gonna be a leader, I'm gonna try to lead right. I'm not gonna push all the nonsense, but I first thing I gotta do, I gotta get rid of the name Killer Reek. Because Killer Reek is synopsis with, you know, the nonsense. Because he was just some other guy. Like, right. <laughs> he was bugged out. So I'm sitting in my cell. I was in Trenton. I was in the MCU uh, uh, management control, control unit in Trenton. And and I'm like, bro. And they had kicked me out of the county. That's how I ended up there. They just, they, they just, man, they just, the dog would be all out. So I wrote, I'm like, bro, I'm trying to find a new name. I said, because, you know, this name ain't, you know, Killer Week, I gotta get rid of it. I mean, it's, right. it's, 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 it's too much violence behind it, you know what I mean? It is, you know, like I, I lived a very violent life, and I, I, to lie about it is to not accept what it was, you know? Now, if I'm gonna be on truth, I'm gonna stand on truth, so I, I lived a very, one of those lives to where that, I'm not gonna let you hurt me, you know what I mean? And them the kind of people that I was around, back then it was like, if he a shooter, he a shooter. If he a killer, he a killer, you know what I mean? You know he gonna come kill you. Cause right. he may be a shooter, he may shoot you two times in the leg, but this one here, he ain't gonna stop. Right, like, right. Like, and right. this his man, right. you know what I mean? Right. Like, you got a problem with him, but you know he gonna go crazy. Right. You feel what right. I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it was like, you you had to either step up or get crushed. It, it, was, it was bad. So the brother, he tells me, he writes me back. He said, I got one for you. He said, San Kofa. He said it was a brother that was in Trenton, I mean not in Trenton, in Texas, named Gary Sankofa. He was okay. on death row, wow. you know what I mean? And he was innocent. And the brother said, man, I'm gonna fight all the way into the chair. Right. And that's what he did when they, when they killed him. Wow. And he said, you remind me of him because you always got fight in you and you always standing on what's right. He right. was like, also it means to reach back and fetch. Take part of your past or whatever you can get from your past and use it to go towards your future for right. the bird. You know right, what I mean? Right. So I'm like, yeah, he like, that's you because your past is really what's dictating what's going on with you now. Right. So the name Sankofa stuck and I just rocked it all the way from, I think it was old, beginning of 03, all the way up. Right. You know what I mean? So. What is your message to the youth like right now? You know, I like, I like the, you know, I don't, I don't shirk no one else's uh, or, or disrespect no one else's uh, ways of going about trying to help. Cause your way may save this one, my way may save that one. Right. So whatever it takes to save them, as an adult, you feel what I'm saying? Right. Like I think every child should be protected by every adult. It don't matter if it's your child. Right. It don't matter the color of the child. You know what I mean? It's a child. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Like oh, that ain't my kid. See the kid getting all snatched up and all that. I ain't getting involved. What do you mean? Right. That's a child. They're innocent. So my my thing would be. And my advice will always, and it's gonna always be, let's just say, if you're in it. Right. You know what I mean? And you're trying to figure out ways to get out of it without having to deal with the nonsense that comes from your homies. You know what I mean? You know, you want them to, sh you want to show them like, look, this is what I'm on. You know what I mean? I'm working, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do, and they really love you, they're gonna be happy for you. Right. You feel what I'm saying? But if you're not in it and you're thinking about getting into it, you know, no one understand that, you know, it ain't too many choices. It ain't too many things that like, if you have a job, you have a few choices. You right. know what I mean? Right. You have a few choices that you can do and move around, but on that end, you don't have choices. Your choices is either you either gonna ride or you gonna be a prey, period. Right. You know what I mean? Either you gonna end up dead or you gonna end up in prison. You don't have a lot of choices. So when you decide to make your choice, man, make that choice and make it make sense to you. Cause you don't even gonna have to live it. Absolutely. You know what I mean? I wouldn't, I me personally, 
I wouldn't advise it because it's it's no more love. You know what I mean? We have our select few that show love. Right. We got that. You know what I mean? Because everybody ain't fake. There's still real ones everywhere. Right. Under everything. You feel mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But you have to make decisions that's conducive on your growth. And if you're hanging with someone who don't want to grow up, who want to stay right there, you got to get away from that. Right. You know what I mean? Why would you? Why are you doing the same things at 30 you was doing at 25? Right. You know what I mean? You have to grow. And if you can't grow, you're going to stay stuck and stagnated. Nah, you don't want to be around that. You don't want to be around that, man. So, you know, to the brothers that's still in it, the brothers and sisters that's still in it, man, you know, I, I wish y'all the best, man. You know, I, 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 I seek y'all safety, man. You know, and whatever decisions y'all make, just stand on them. You know, Absolutely. just stand on me, man. That's, that'd be my advice, man, because we all got to live our life, man. And I be trying to tell them, like, you sure? <laughs> I used to be asking them, right. like, you sure? Right. You know what I mean? Because I don't want to hear no complaints six months from now when this is when it's going right. crazy. It's real. I done yeah. gave you, yeah, it's real. Yeah, yeah, it's not yeah. nothing to be played with. So I done gave you all the good and the bad of it. You right. know what I mean? The right. good is like you're going to have homies that love you. You're going to have people that you can come get when you need something. You're going to have people that got your back because they're, they're obligated to have your back. Right. You know what I mean? So those are the good things. The bad things are more detrimental to your growth and your health because you die. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Faster than you would just on some regular stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can end up in prison for the rest of your life. Or, or all your life just be gone because you're holding it down. You think this is what you have to do. You know what I mean? Or you end up into it with your homies. Right. Like, right. Same dudes that's supposed to hold you down. Right. That's what's been happening now, man. I don't know who told y'all that if that's your brother, y'all are protecting each other every day that it's okay to do something to him. That's right. crazy. Right. That makes no sense. Right. You know what I mean? We can right. be in a car every day. We rocking. I, we doing what we do, and then one little thing, shit, I up and hurt you. Right. That makes no sense to me. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, and that's what's going on now. It's a dog eat dog world. Don't nobody care. So nah, I, I, my advice would be, man, it's pros and cons with everything. But just think about it before you do it. I, you know. If you want me to talk him out of it, I'm like, how can I, that's his decision. Right, right, <laughs> what right, do you right. want me to do? Right. You feel what I'm saying? I'm one of the real ones. I'm not going to sit and just say things to make it sound good. It is, it's, a, it's an actual fact that even if I sit and I tell this young brother, listen, man, this is this, this, that, and third. You can show him caskets. You can do all that. He can go right around the corner and get jumped. You feel what I'm saying? He, right. he now he feel like he need these right here that we gonna breed them. So now he joins this this hood or whatever, and they go back, and now everything is escalating off of nothing because we're not out there with him. Right. So all you wanna do is equip him with the tools to make sure he survive. That's so when right. he do make that decision, he notices the decision that he that that's what he did. Right. You, you know what I mean? So he ain't blinded. You right. owe him that. You owe him to tell him the truth. That's it. When the young ones come and they try to breed something that you know can get them killed, you owe them to tell them the truth. I don't care how old they is. Absolutely. You know what I mean? I wouldn't breed them like that, but no. You know what I mean? Tell them the truth. Don't lie to them. Don't act like it's, it ain't going to be hard. Right. <laughs> so where can people find your books? Right now, we, we me, me and my peoples, we getting it together right now. But right now, the come up is on um, on my Instagram, king.sankofa. It's $30. You know, shipping and handling is free. Put in the subject line where you want the book to go. But we got the other books coming out, Manipulation by Blood, How to Keep Your Kid Away from Game. Uh, we trying to work on some movies things too. So, you know, it only been 60 some days for me, so I'm just taking my time. Absolutely. You know, yeah, it's, it's coming now. Don't even trip. Absolutely. All right. So you fresh out, you fresh out yeah. on the bricks. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Oh, yeah. All right, so look, y'all, this is, this is exclusive. Sankofa Speaks, all right? So I want y'all to follow his page with a, where y'all can, the IG where you can get the books. What's the IG again? Uh, King.Sankofa, S-A-N-K-O-F-A. Absolutely. Hey, thank you for coming out, speaking to your brother. Yeah. You're, you're in the crib. Oh, family, y'all. Y'all better know that's what's happening. That's a fact. All right? So yeah. we're going to break this up in little parts, but this is the whole thing exclusive. Watch it, share it with your people, share it with your, your youth. Let them actually get educated and see it, hear it from a real OG, a legend, all right? So y'all learn a little something, and this is Save the Arts TV. Let's go.